Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a bit different. In this video, I will focus on the use of AI in fashion photography which is quite different from the use of AI in fashion designing. Using AI for fashion design in the fashion industry is an entirely different subject and I won't be touching on that. So, who is this video for? Maybe a fashion design student who wants to understand how AI is used in fashion photography. The video would be helpful for fashion enthusiasts or anyone in the fashion industry, including photographers, who would like to understand and learn the creative prompting processes used in AI generative art and AI tools in reference to fashion photography. Or for anyone who wants to learn for fun. I will be talking a little bit about the AI Fashion Week event, which happened in April of this year in New York City. In the video, you will also learn some basics of photography, specifically fashion photography. We did an earlier video that focused on street portraits. I will leave a link to that video in the description below. For this video, I will be using Midjourney and Google Bard. Part 2 of this video would be using Midjourney with ChatGPT4 with the web browsing beta function. In the beginning, I said this video would be a bit different. What I am going to do is take a simple prompt, say a one-line prompt, which I will call level 1, and keep adding to the prompt, say to level 10. You will understand my thought process and see the difference in the images from level 1 to level 10. Not only that, I will go beyond level 10, let's say, an expert level, and there's where the magic will happen. I know everyone loves prompts. I say that sentence in almost every video, but this time I want to teach you the prompting formula rather than give you the prompt. Of course, you will get all the prompts, but understanding the formula is the most essential part of this video. I will use and improve this formula as we progress to higher levels and use Google Bard to generate prompts. Once you understand the formula and its process, I will move on to the expert level where we won't need Google Bard anymore. I will also teach you how to use this formula and generate professional looking runway fashion photography. I will also talk about how to use remix mode in mid-journey and change some minor things in the final photographs. All this may sound overwhelming. But I assure you that watch the entire video, and you will find it very easy and simple to create photos similar to those that were displayed at the AI Fashion Week event. Before I start, let me tell you our team has done around two months of research about AI and fashion, the prompts, the formula, and testing with Google Bard, and I personally have zero knowledge about fashion, and I seriously mean zero. At the end of this video, see the images produced by me, who has no fashion sense, and imagine what wonders someone can do with a much better fashion sense and knowledge. Let's talk in short about AI Fashion Week. There was an event held between April 20th to 21st this year in Spring Place, New York. You can go to their website, which is fashionweek.ai. You can browse around and check out the top 10 finalists, see the FAQ section, see how to apply, when is their next event, rules, and guidelines, etc. This video will basically help you to create AI fashion images as you see on the website. From what I understand, anyone can apply. Obviously, they have some conditions, but I was surprised to read that they allow Photoshop edits for disfigurement and some other hiccups created by AI. So that's a good thing. Now why AI in fashion, and why keep an event? That is what anyone would ask. Well, to be honest, I think the objective is to bring out a fresh perspective in the industry and change the way we think about AI and fashion. AI can and has the potential to change the way designers think about fashion and design. It also helps you to think out of the box. I found it very fascinating how you can play around and come up with new design ideas. And while I was creating images for this video, that's exactly what happened. So in a way, I do feel that such events are helpful. Anyone can participate, and the more, the better. Ultimately, it's good for the consumers. So, saying that, let's just move on with the prompting and formulation process. I also would like to mention that there were some bugs with Google Bard. If you compare it with ChatGPT3, Google Bard is way better. But not if you have ChatGPT4 with the beta web access, then Bard is far behind. But again, Google Bard is free, and ChatGPT4 is not. 
Hence we are going to have part 2 of this video for people who have access to chat GPT for beta because the automation in that is totally on a new level. Let's start with a simple prompt. We don't need to use BARD for this level. An ultra realistic fashion photo full shot, sharp focus, photo realistic. Please focus on an ultra realistic fashion photo. All the prompts will include these wordings. You can use some other wordings like a Vogue photo shoot. I prefer not to use that here, but you can try it out. Now full shot is used to give a full shot of the subject, but with such a simple prompt, Midjourney won't give correct results always. But it will provide accurate results once the prompt gets complicated. I don't know why this happens, it's Midjourney, it just happens. In all the prompts, we will use sharp focus and photorealistic at the end. For fashion photography, the aspect ratio that I am using is either 4 is to 3 for wide shots or 3 is to 4 for tall shots. Other aspect ratios used are, for example, 5 is to 8 or 8 is to 5. These would mainly be used for printing. We will stick to the two ratios I mentioned. Lastly, all images are done in Midjourney version 5.1 with the default values like S750 and Q2. So this is what we got in the tall ratio. One thing I notice is that with the simple prompt mid-journey, 95% of the time creates female images only. We will change that at the next level. Let's see the 4 is to 3 ratio images. Also, notice how mid-journey ignores the full shot in the prompt here. Let's move on to level 2. For level 2, let's start using Google Bard. We write the following in Bard to give us two samples since we have only added a male or female parameter. I need you to understand the formula. The formula is an ultra realistic fashion photo full shot of A, male or female, sharp focus, photorealistic, use the words exactly in given quotes and randomly in brackets as explained. Put the suffix AR4 is to 3 without quotation at the end of the sentence. Do you understand the prompt formula? Bard understood the formula, and since there are only two parameters, the example Bard gives is enough. We don't need to tell Bard to write any prompts. We will do that as we progress further. Now we use the two formulas and both ratios in mid-journey, and here are the results. Please note we are just on level 2. You won't see any drastic changes yet. Again you can see the full shot is ignored by mid-journey. We will fix that as we progress. Images are good, but we want more control. Let's spice some things up and move on to level 3. For level 3, we added hair color and a pose. We are not defining the pose. So the prompt changes to an ultra-realistic fashion photo full shot of A, male or female, with black, red, brown or blonde, hair with a pose, sharp focus, photorealistic. So Google Bard understood the prompt formula correctly and has given some prompts with different hair colors, for male or female, and with a pose. These are the results we got from Midjourney. So the first two images we get are of males, and you can clearly see there is a pose. Let's look at the wider shots. On the right, you can see the female is blonde, and on the left, the male is a redhead. So we have some more control over the images. Please note that in the wide images, the keyword full shot is still ignored, but it is applied correctly to the tall ratio. Let's progress to level 4. We are adding the timing in level 4, which would make the photo more dynamic. So the prompt changes to an ultra-realistic fashion photo full shot at sunrise, morning, afternoon, golden hour, sunset, twilight or night of a male or female with black, red, brown or blonde, hair with a pose, sharp focus, photorealistic. Bard has taken the time factor correctly and has given three sample prompts. Whenever Bard does something correctly, always click the thumbs up so it knows the response that it has provided is correct. You can now ask Bard to write, say, five prompts as per the formula given. Let's 
Let's see the results with different timings in the prompts. Look how beautiful the left image is. The model has a pose, different hair color, and there is a sunset in the background. The natural light gives the photo a completely different look and feel. The image on the right is also beautiful. The male pose is excellent with the beautiful sunset and natural lighting. These images have a drastic change in them by adding the natural time of the day into the prompt. In the wide-angle photos, Midjourney now has correctly used the full shot keyword. The male photo with a walking pose in the city, in the evening, I guess, is beautiful. On the right, we got a female on the beach during golden hour. You can now see how significant the day's timing is in the prompt for fashion photography. Let's move on to level 5. Google has given some weird results here. I will show you how to fix it in a bit. For level 5, we add some high fashion clothing to the model. The prompt changes as follows. An ultra-realistic fashion photo full shot at sunrise, morning, afternoon, golden hour, sunset, twilight or night of a male or female with black, red, brown or blonde hair with a pose wearing one any high fashion and expensive branded outfit with the name of the brand and the name of the outfit in details, sharp focus, photorealistic. Now what you need to do is go to drafts. You can see the second draft matches my prompt style. The third draft is very different. So we here select the second draft and click the thumbs up. We then tell Bard to write five prompts as per the formula. It chooses the clothing, but it's not accurate. You can see it's using the fall 2023 in the prompt, which is wrong, but the brand is correct. Mid-journey data is a bit old and will never be up to the current date. It's six months old or when the last update was pushed out. I will show you how to correct that as we progress further. Let's go on to see the images. Just see the difference in the photos. Now it's looking like an outdoor fashion shoot. And we are still at level 5. We have to reach level 10, then expert, and then runway level for the AI Fashion Week. Both the images, the clothing style, the pose, and the scene are beautifully done. But still, we don't have complete control. And I hope you understand the thought process so far of prompting in fashion photography. The wide shots are fantastic if you ask me. Just see the left image, golden hour, long exposure, excellent fashion clothing, beautiful model, absolutely perfect. Even the image on the right is top notch. But we need more control. Let us progress to level 6 and you will see what I mean by more control. Now in level 6, we are just going to add adjectives in brackets. We will not be referencing these adjectives to anything and Bard will automatically choose 5 adjectives per the scene, the hour, or the subject. You can see again that the answer by Bard is not what we want, so we go to drafts and look. Draft 2 is also not proper, but draft 3, yup, that's what we want, so we thumb it up here. Also, you can see the 5 random adjectives Bard has written. These adjectives will affect the photograph. We can use the examples it gave or tell it to write 5 more prompts. And it generates the prompts beautifully. Just a note, anytime Bard gives weird results, you just close, reopen, and repeat. That's how it works in the current state. Let's look at the images. In the prompt, let me explain what the adjectives actually did. For the image on the left, I got the adjectives like handsome, stylish, cool, and confident, which does match the photograph. On the other hand, for the image on the right, I got adjectives like elegant, graceful, sophisticated, and stunning. We do not add verbs here because verbs are used to define actions. 
Four or five adjectives will make subtle but noticeable changes to the fashion photo. For the wide shot of the left, the adjectives used were striking, glamorous, confident, and mysterious. While on the right, I used handsome, dashing, sophisticated, and refined. So, adjectives like these, which Bard generated, are clearly working, and this is evident from the images. I keep repeating this, but we need even further control. Let's progress to level 7. Here we take things up a notch, and we added two things, actually three things here. 1. The specific camera model. 2. The camera lens matching the camera model, and lastly, a render option. We change the formula now, and we add using a Canon camera with Canon 85mm lens, Nikon with Nikon lens, and so on and so forth. Why am I using these specific camera models and lenses? Simple, just open Bard and ask, please list five camera models with their brand name and matching lens used by fashion photographers. And it will give you the response I just entered into the prompt. Now you may ask why and what are renders? Well, rendering engines are software or hardware that are used to render 3D models, scenes, or animations into a final, two-dimensional image or video. Different rendering engines have different features and capabilities, and they can produce different visual styles and levels of realism. So what I have done is I asked Bard again, please list renders typically used for photography for AI-generated art. I collected that information and listed all the renders. So now Midjourney will generate the image as if it's taken from a specific camera and lens, which have different f-stops and focal lengths, and since this is generative AI photography, a render is preferred. For now, let the render and camera model be random. When we are beyond level 10, we would be using specific keywords of our own preference based on the final formula. And thank God we got the correct response in draft one. So we go ahead, like always, thumbs up, and tell Bard to write using some prompts based on the above formula. And we have the prompts. After adding the camera model and render, the level 7 images are sharper and they look more photorealistic. The depth of the field will also vary. I wanted to tell you none of the images shown in this video are in any way edited in Photoshop. I can make them even pop out more in Photoshop, but what you see is what is right out of mid-journey and enlarged using the stable diffusion method. Every now and then, you will get images with extra hands, legs, or fingers. Yeah, this still happens in mid-journey. There is no solution to that as of now, just regenerate the image or rewrite the prompt. This is not very common, and it's like 5 out of 100 images get this distortion. Also, if the model is too far off, the model's face is always distorted. For some reason, mid-journey has a distance limit. Beyond a certain distance, the model faces are distorted. If you use the same prompt and bring the model a bit closer, it's clear. When we reach the expert level, you will understand how difficult it is to generate perfect looking images at the proper distance on the runway, where you can see the whole body of the model. But there is a trick to it. You will get it after you see the prompts in practice. In level 8, I am going to add the year, and I am going to keep it random for now. I have kept the year till 2022. There is no point in adding 2023, as Midjourney's data is not live. So the year up to 2022 should be fine. The second thing I added to the prompt is any random location in the world. Again, the first draft is not correct. Let's look at drafts 2 and 3. I think draft 2 is what we want. Always look at the samples Google Bar gives. Let's give thumbs up and generate the prompts.
You can see Bard has now randomized the year and chosen a random location. There is still a lot to do for better control. Let's check out the images for level 8. Let's talk about these images in detail. Firstly, the image on the left is from the 1970s. Of the four images I got, only this one had accurate clothing and cars in the background. The location chosen was in the middle of the city. When we reach level 10, I will explain how to automatically control and match the dressing as per the year via Google Bard. So at level 10, if the year is 1970, the photo will look like 1970 in reference to the clothing and the location. Now focus on the image to the right. The location here was a beach in Bali, Indonesia. So it's accurate to the location and year. For the wide shot, the image on the left was in the year 2019 and the location was on a rooftop in New York City. This image is perfect and adding location gives you some photo variety. The image on the right was in the year 2000, but the location was the field of flowers. The image turned out beautiful. I don't think the year is that important, but for some professional use, you may want to generate a fashion photo at a specific time frame with the clothes and environment matching that time. The location is essential in the prompt. I would have never guessed in a field of flowers. So location here does not mean just a city or a country. It can be anything, like a rooftop, alleyway, street, marketplace, beach, etc., which can be in a specific city or country or not. In any fashion photography, natural light is hardly used. The lighting used in fashion photography is different from other styles of photography. Photographers use strobe, continuous, ring, beauty dish, rim, natural, fill, key, or backlight lighting. Let me explain one or two lighting styles, and you can use Bard and check out the meaning for all of them. Take ring lighting, for example. Here the ring light is typically placed directly in front of the subject, with the camera shooting through the middle of the ring. The ring light illuminates the subject evenly from all sides, minimizing harsh shadows and providing a sort of halo lighting effect on the subject. A beauty dish, for example, is a circular reflector or dish designed to diffuse light and direct it toward the subject. The beauty dish is designed in such a way that it creates light that is softer than a direct flash, but harder than the light produced by a softbox. The result is a light that can highlight the detail and texture features of the facial bone structure and makeup, hence the name beauty dish. If you want to learn, you can ask Bard explain strobe lighting, for example, in fashion photography. Knowing about each lighting type and its function will give you complete control of the lighting, and this is specifically important when creating expert level photography where you are defining everything yourself. Photographers also use a modifier along with the lighting. What is a modifier? A modifier is an accessory used to control the quality, direction, intensity, and shape of the light produced by a light source. The main reason to use this is to create a specific mood, style, or effect in the photographic composure. So in the prompt, I have defined to use any one of the following modifiers in random, which are umbrella, softbox, grid, flag, or reflector. Basically, as said earlier, if you want to go at an expert level, you need to understand both the lighting and the modifier and then mix and match to get the desired lighting effect you want on the subject. You can ask Bard to explain each of the modifiers listed in the prompt in reference to fashion photography. Draft 1 is correct. So we give a thumbs up and ask Bard to write 5 prompts. Let's check out how this lighting and modifiers affect the photos. Aren't these photos fantastic? See the image on the left. There is a sun backlight. Technically without artificial lighting or modifier, the subject and the dress would be dark. 
However, in the prompt, I included strobe lighting with a softbox modifier. That, with the other changes we made through level 1 to level 9, gives this effect. We still have to go to level 10 and beyond. The image on the right was taken with a coliseum as a backdrop during the day. So the prompt included natural lighting with reflector modifier. In the wide shots, I specifically chose the timing as twilight. It would be best to have lighting and a modifier to take a fashion photo in the evening. The whole scene is dark. The photographer will need to light up the subject with artificial lighting. For the photo on the left, a ring lighting with a grid modifier was included in the prompt. You can see how the subject is lit up and how the modifier controls the lighting direction to create a natural and soft facial shadow. The whole backdrop is twilight. The photo on the right used the same lighting style and modifier. Let us move on to level 10. Level 10 is the secret sauce where we tell Google Bard to reference everything with each other in the prompt, and it does a perfect job. First, I changed the pose and defined the poses using modeling and fashion photography. This was done through research by the team. I used pose keywords like standing, full body standing, three quarter, sitting, leaning, walking, back, over the shoulder, and so on. Second, I wrote a new keyword in brackets which is explain the pose in detail in reference to fashion photography. This will generate a specific random pose and explain the pose to have more control over the subject in the generated photo. Google Bard understands that the pose and the pose explanation are both in reference to fashion photography. Remember when I said we need more control over the outfit as per the year? The third thing I added to the prompt formula was, want any high fashion and expensive branded outfit with the name of the brand and the name of the outfit in details in reference to the year. This will tell Bard that whatever random year it chooses, and after that, whatever fashion clothing it chooses should match the year. Bard will automatically do this, and it works beautifully. Then I made changes to the five adjectives and added, in reference to the year and pose of the model. What Bard does here is it will define the adjective as per the pose and year it has chosen. Remember, you cannot change the order of the prompt if you want Bard to reference everything correctly. That's how the formula is designed. First, it will choose a pose and explain the pose in the prompt, and then it will choose the year. After that, it will determine the outfit in reference to the fashion and according to the year it has chosen. Lastly, the adjectives it will give will be as per whatever it has done above, in the order given. Hence this order of referencing is important. The first draft is wrong. So again, let's look at the other drafts. Draft 3 is what we want. So let's give a thumbs up and ask it to write some prompts. It is given very accurate prompts as per the formula defined. Let's thumbs up again and have a look at level 10 images. These are level 10 images. I will show you 8 images instead of 4 before moving on to the expert level. The image on the left had the prompt sitting pose, reading a book, in a library. Bart accurately defined the pose and the pose details and even added the environment. The year is 1980 and used the outfit style to match the year. It did the same with the image on the right. 
the year 1990, looking at the sky with a three-quarter pose. For the next set of images, focus on the right image. The photo taken is in the 1980s, and it correctly chooses Dior Haute Couture Spring, Summer 1981 outfit. So it matches the year and the outfit. The image on the left was taken in the 1980s. Bard chose a 1986 outfit and used a leaning pose for the model looking at the stars. The right image was taken in the 1990s. Bard accurately gave the prompt to match the outfit and the location according to the year. The photo even has a retro look and feel to it. The left image is one of the most beautiful shots I have seen. The outfit, the pose, and the location all are in sync. Just perfect. Let me now show you the final prompt formula. This is the level 10 formula that can be used in BARD. The entire formula with the BARD instructions is in the link description, which you can copy and paste. You can play around by removing the random factors in the brackets and defining just one thing. You can remove all the random factors and make the prompt, or you can mix and match. For example, you can choose a specific model, the ethnicity of the model, a specific time of the day, a specific pose and year, and randomize the outfit, camera model lightning style, modifiers, and renders. Once you have understood this process, use the formula and experiment with the clothing and environment. You can add the model wearing something specific and change the environment altogether. Once you do that, I call that an expert level. Let me show you the images I created by mixing and matching them with this formula. All the images shown in the video with the prompts and seeds will be in the Google Drive zip file link in the description. That zip file will even include the expert and runway images along with their respective prompts. I have taken the liberty to upscale these images using Stable Diffusion. I will put a link on how to upscale these images, the free way, in the description as well. Just look at the images while I'll be silent for some time. After that, I will teach you how to create runway style fashion photos similar to what was shown in the AI Fashion Week. Also note that the slideshow images had to be cropped to 16 is to 9 ratio for the video. The zip will include the full resolution. Enjoy!
The prompt for the runway is very simple. These are the changes that are required in the formula. Remove the following. Timing, pose, year, outfit, location, and adjectives. After an ultra-realistic fashion photo of a male or female model with black, red, brown, or blonde hair, and before the camera keywords, put the following. Walking down a ready-to-wear, haute couture, pre-collection, trunk show, avant-garde, pop-up, press, catwalk, outdoor, indoor, runway. Create different themes for the runway and explain in detail in the year 2020, wearing one any fashion clothing. Explain the fashion clothing in details. And that's it. Let's try the formula in Google Bard. So here is the problem with Bard. This doesn't happen with ChatGPT. The first draft is correct, so I will give a thumbs up and ask it to write me five prompts. In the prompt it generates, for some weird reason, it puts future years except the year 2020 which I mentioned in the formula. To correct it, type in the following, please rewrite the prompts as per the above formula using the year 2020 only and write me five prompts. It then generates the prompts again with the correct year. I have tried this many times, but 95% of the time is the same, I have no idea why. The prompts you get using BARD are, again, basic. You now have the formal for fashion photography and have changed the formula to runway fashion photography. Now you can mix and match and add your clothing style, runway type, location, etc. And create images like those shown in the AI Fashion Week. Let's see some images I have created using my own zero sense of fashion. I have created eight tall and eight wide runway fashion photos. There is nothing to discuss about these photos, so just look. The props for them will be in the zip file, so you can get an idea of what I changed. Only one thing, while using the formula, if you don't see any crowd on the sides of the runway, write this just before the camera model keyword, runway has crowd on the side. And it will generate photos with people on the sides of the runway. To conclude, I hope the video was helpful and it helped you understand our thought process about prompting in fashion photography. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below, and if you are interested, you can participate in any upcoming AI fashion events. We will be making part 2 of this video, where we will be using ChatGPT for web browsing beta for the prompting automation. It's entirely on a different level as compared to the current Google Bard. As I said at the beginning of the video that I would show you how to use the remix function of Midjourney in reference to fashion clothing. Unfortunately, we could not include that part in this video. We will definitely include it in part 2. Until next time. If you have watched till here, thanks. Please, like and subscribe, and hit the bell notification to receive a notification as soon as we upload a new video.